Life family, I'm Mac, and I just want to welcome you to today's service as we'll be diving into a time of worship, prayer, followed by the word that I just know will inspire you. And don't forget to check out our giving link below and comment and connect. But for now, let's jump into the word. magnificent God who is a mighty fortress who nothing and no one can stand against who is an ever-present help in times of trouble who never ever loses a battle who is victorious in and through all things so can we just lift our voices and give praise to the God of our salvation to our rock to our refuge to our deliverance your way in this service and go ahead and just let us know you're with us make a comment respond as God prompts you we're here to worship you Lord
go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shine in the shine You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God And no mighty force You go before us Nothing can stand against
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm protected. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Love. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
the mountain shame I put my trust in Jesus The moment I awake And when my soul is lost at sea He will be my rock my vision be in Christ alone This grace is all we've got His love is like the mighty ocean His love for me will never stop All His arms are strong enough Bye. 
upon our hearts, moving upon our minds. And when you move, God, you stir, you activate, you prompt, and you release. So Lord, we just avail ourselves to be filled to overflowing. That's what you're here to do, and we receive it, Lord. Every depleted place, every weary place, Lord, just move upon. Move upon those areas, God. Breathe your life. Renew hope. Establish your peace, God. It's what you're here to do. It's what you're here to do. It's what you're here to do, Lord. Fill us through and through. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the promise of fullness in you. So just continue to have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. To the broken and to the hurting, to the desperate and to the defeated, to the common, the average, the plain and the small, I want you to know you matter to God. To the washed up and the worn out, to the helpless and the hopeless, to the cast outs, the dropouts, the last picks and hypocrites, to the unimpressive and the underwhelming, to the nobodies and has-beens, to people just like me, you matter to God. 
You are not defined by your worst days or your biggest mistakes. And you are not the sum total of all your setbacks, slip ups, failures, and faults. Because who you are is not determined by what you have, where you've been, or what you've done, but who Jesus declares you to be. You matter to God. Maybe at some point somebody told you something that simply wasn't true. That you're nothing but unworthy, unwanted, and unloved. But I want the loudest voice in your ear to be the voice that breaks the cedars and shakes the wilderness. And he says, you matter to me. Before the galaxies were born, or the first star gave light, before the ocean waves crashed or the night sky cracked with thunder, before any creature crawled or any bird sang, before the planets were set in motion, he set in motion the plan of your salvation. From the highest heights of heaven, the Lord of all creation looked upon your desperation. He became like one of us to remake all of us, to make an orphan his child, to make a rebel his friend, to set the prisoner free. You matter to God. So to all the sons and daughters of God, to all my brothers and sisters in Christ, behold his power and glory and majesty. Behold the one who matters most. Well, good morning, Real Life Church, and it is awesome to be with you again, and we are going to be talking about our series we just started. This is Real Life, and if you missed last week, you're going to want to go back and rewatch. We're just establishing and looking at the values and the uh, specific ways that God has graced our church. And last week we looked at the word real life and what it meant. And that word real means not imitation or artificial, genuine or authentic. That's what we want to be and that is what we value to be at Real Life Church. We go through real pain and we have real problems, but we also have a real God that can empower us to overcome any situation in our life. All we have to do is partner with Him, and that is real life. This word life means the ability to grow, transform, activate God-given potential. Come on, somebody. It's the ability to come alive. See, that's what happened when Christ came into our life, is we were made alive in Christ Jesus. And so, we were uh, lost in our transgressions, we were dead in our sin, but when we came to Christ, we were made alive in Him. That's so vitally important because when we came alive, there were things that God had put in our DNA that He ordained to happen, purposes, potential, gifting, that He ignited and began to, uh, to activate in our life. And so there's this transformation that we find ourselves going on. That is real life, is we're going from faith to faith to glory to glory. We looked about our family circle, and uh, Pastor Scott would always say, and I want to give the quote again today, he would say, you know, church happens in circles, not in rows. You know, sometimes it can feel like we're having a two-way, a one-way conversation. We come to church, we hear the pastor, he talks to us, we leave, and there's nothing that is in connection beyond that. Well, I'm glad at Real Life Church that we, uh, we provide and allow for those deeper connections. Um, as we were at Men's Life Group the other night, we had so wonderful, uh, a wonderful study and just hearing the men and sharing just encourages my heart as we pray with each other and we're there for each other. And if you're looking for that in your life, you can join us. You can sign up for those life groups uh, after this service. There's a link there in our events page. You can go right there, sign up in the link and be a part of what God's doing in the circle. So today as we talk about, we continue this series called This is Real Life, uh, I wanted to talk about our second point from last week, and that is the kingdom mission. You see, everything that we do at Real Life is engaged in what the Bible says the kingdom is about. Now, every church should be that way, but there's some distinctions in what I feel God has called Real Life Church to operate in that kingdom building mindset. And that is 
teaching people, discipling, training, equipping, giving words that build up and edify, that teach people to hunger and desire for the word, practical application that they can take and they can apply today. You know, when I was in Bible school, I learned a lot about the Bible, a lot about history, a lot about theology. But it's not just enough to know God's Word. You have to know how to apply God's Word. That's what real life is about, is taking what God has shown us and taught us through Scripture and applying it to our life. Discipleship doesn't happen by just going to classes, going to uh, going to. Uh, a next step class or going to a life group or those things. Those are all tools and all ways and methods in which God can accomplish discipleship. But discipleship really happens when we follow. When we follow the example of the Holy Spirit and we follow His voice and we follow the leaders that He has put in our life that care about us and are there for us. And so discipleship is part of our distinction. We want to be a discipling church where at every age and every stage we're teaching people to love God the Father, to embrace the works of Jesus, what He accomplished on the cross and the risen grave, and to love and appreciate the Holy Spirit. I call that baptism the immersion of an atmosphere in which people value the Father, They love the works of the Son and what He accomplished through the cross and raising from the dead. And they value and honor the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk to us about today is one of our distinct values that we appreciate at Real Life Church and makes this real life is being Spirit-formed and Spirit-led. We want to be Spirit-formed people and Spirit-led people. And I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about those two things. One thing that's certain that you can count on at Real Life Church is that we honor the person head of God in the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the continual abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that we are after at it as a church. We want to remove every hindrance, everything that can keep us separated from the abiding presence of His Spirit. You see, without His presence present with us, there is no encounter, there is no convincing, and there is no transformation in the hearts and minds of people. We believe that one encounter with the Holy Spirit changes destiny. Let me say that again. One encounter with the Holy Spirit changes destiny. You see, seeking God's Spirit will align my heart and my life to His purpose. You see, every year I do an entire series on the Holy Spirit. It's not because I run out of things to say. It's because I value it as a, as a, a in our real life family that we understand who the Holy Spirit is, why He's been given to us, and the importance of Him in our daily life, in every area, in every area of our mind, in every area of our body. He will lead us and guide us into the truth. But we believe that an encounter with the Holy Spirit can change destiny, change life. It can change who we are. It will transform us from the inside out. So in our real life, family, we're going, if we're going to live out the spirit forms life, there has to be a commitment to hear God's voice. Part of being spirit full or spirit filled is being able to discern and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Psalms 119 verse 130 says this, the entrance of your words gives light It gives understanding to the simple. So the psalmist is saying, God, when you speak, I have understanding. It's like turning on a light switch where I have the aha moment. And and the things that are complex become simple. That's what we would call 
Um, we use a word called revelation or it being revealed to us, to our mind. It, our spirit may even know that something's right, but sometimes our mind and our spirit don't connect. And so when it's revealed, not only to our spirit, but to our mind, we have those aha moments. And once it's revealed to us and we, and we know in our heart, over our head, then it becomes a part of the DNA and the life that we have. So a commitment to hear God's voice. Jesus talked about this when he was talking about, um, he was telling the story about how the shepherd will go after the one. And he said these words in John chapter 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. He goes on to say is that if they hear another shepherd, they won't follow because they don't know his voice. You see, the loudest voice in our life is the voice that we are going to follow. Being spirit formed means that we have developed a sense of hearing. The value that we have at Real Life Church is that every person from a very young age to a very old age would be able to discern and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He, they would hear the still small utterance of his life. You see, to read and study God's Word is to lay the foundation for the un understanding and growth. However, the Bible is the living Word. It has not been given solely for information, analysis, and education. We value the Word of God, but it is a book. It's a historical book, and maybe you, like me, at times, you've read things, and it's like, this is boring me out of my mind. I'm just keeping it real at Real Life Church. Or, I don't understand what's going on here. You know, we all face those things. But if we open ourselves up to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, then the information becomes transformational or revel revelatory in our life. That means it's just revealed to us. The light bulb goes on. You see, God wants to speak to us as His children in order to teach and correct, lead and direct, and keep and protect. I love that and I'm going to say it again. He wants us to, to he wants to speak to us as his children to teach and correct, lead and direct, and keep and protect. For this to take place, it is vitally and ongoingly important that we at Real Life Church need to hear the word within the word. Let me tell you what, talk to you a little bit of what that means. As, as we're hearing the word, maybe you're hearing something today, you're hearing me talk, but I want you to listen to the word within the word. What is the Holy Spirit putting his finger on in your life today? I always say, what is the one thing that the Holy Spirit would have you walk away from today and apply to your life? That's such an important principle. We need to be not just hearing with our physical ears, but the ears of our spirit. Holy Spirit, what are you trying to what are you trying to get at today? What are you trying to confirm in my life? What are you trying to encourage in my life? What are you trying to transform in my life? Whatever you're doing, I have ears to hear. Speak to me. Speak to me your words of life. So we need to hear the word within the word. To receive the prophetic intent of the Holy Spirit who breathes truth into our hearts, transforming our lives. Now that word that I just used, prophetic, it just means to foretell. It it's means to edify, to encourage. So when we have a prophetic word, it's something that is raising our hope. Sometimes it brings a correction to it. Um, it, it. It warns us. It tells us of things that will happen. Let me give you an example. The night that Jesus was going to be betrayed, what did he say to Peter? You're going to deny me three times. And he told Judas that he was going to betray him. What was, what was he doing? He wasn't trying to air their dirty laundry. He was giving them a warning. And the Holy Spirit, uh, being Spirit-filled and listening to the Holy Spirit, is God gives us warnings. He gives us, he gives us ability to turn and repent and change our way. He gives us an opportunity to correct before we have to face calamity. So, the ongoing 
hearing of the voice of the Holy Spirit is a value and it is a discipline that we need to get tuned into. Let me ask you this question. What is your life tuned into? Are you tuned into your problem channel? Are you tuned into your stress channel? Are you tuned into your bitterness channel, anger channel, your sports channel, your hobby, whatever it might be, a relational channel? Whatever our hearts are in tuned in our spirit is the voice that we're going to hear. I love that the Lord can realign our heart and our spirit to hear Him and that He still speaks to us today. So if we're going to be, if we're going to have a spirit form life, then there has to be a commitment to hear God's voice. That's how we get direction. That's how we get correction. And that's how we get insight to the challenges that face us in real life. But we also have to ha have a commitment to abiding in the fullness of the Spirit. I want to talk to you about this because it's such an important key to being a Spirit-filled person. And one of the distinctions that we have as being Real Life Church is that we are a Spirit-filled Pentecostal church. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit. And let me emphasize the fruit of the Spirit, that the power of the Spirit was given in Acts 1.8 so that we could be a witness of the character and nature of Christ and be a testimony of the things that he had taught, we have been taught, but also to demonstrate his character and his love and his passion and power to the world so that the works of Jesus when gifts go out, healings happen, there is character to back it up. You see, there's a lot of gifted people, but oftentimes they don't have character. I look at character as integrity and character as the foundation in which our life is built on. If you have a faulty foundation, what happens to a structure over time? Well, we just learned from the tragedy that happened in Florida where the pool was literally eat, eroding the, the soil underneath an apartment, uh, apartment complex that the entire side of an apartment complex collapsed and people lost their life. See, what happens underneath the surface and what we can't see is just as vital as what we can see above the surface. The gifts of the Spirit are kind of like those things that we can see. They, they, they're there to draw people to, to who God is, to demonstrate who God is. But I think the most important thing that God wants to build through the power of the Spirit is our character, the gifts of the Spirit, the things that we couldn't do in ourself. And so if we're going to be people, if we as real life are going to be uh, committed to hearing God's voice, then we also have to be uh, committed to abiding in the fullness of His Spirit. Let's talk about that. John chapter 7, verse 38 says it this way, He who believes in me, as the Scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Man, that sounds amazing. That life can flow out of us. Well, what is that life flow? That is the life flow of the Holy Spirit. It is the life flow of God's power flowing out of our life. Where is it founded upon? The scriptures. What God had. It's not extra scriptural. It is scriptural. That out of us can flow a deeper love for our city. A deeper love for those who may not like us. Who may misuse us. That we can respond in the power of the Holy Spirit. And God can do a work around us. And that is how, what he uses to change atmospheres. As we're abiding in the atmosphere of God and the fullness of his spirit, then it allows us to go into places that may not have the atmosphere of the kingdom in mind and transform that by us being there. And that is one of the distinctions that I believe that a real life uh, a family member carries. That when they say this is real life, is that they're people that are abiding in the fullness of the Spirit. 
Nothing, I, I want to say nothing, and quote, quote, nothing is more essential in becoming rep, a replication or representative of Jesus Christ than being daily empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want you to say that word with me, daily empowered by the Holy Spirit. See, being empowered by the Holy Spirit isn't a one-time event. You'll find all the way through Acts that they would pray for greater boldness. They would pray and the Spirit would fill them. It would empower them to do what they were asking for. I believe it's true in our life as well. And how much right now do we need the power of His Spirit in the trials and the, uh, the hurdles that we're facing in our own life, in our country? We need that in, uh, abiding power every day. The word abiding means it's consistently with us. It's consistently there. You don't have to worry about uh, it ever being lacking power. I'm so glad that when I come into my dark house at night that I can flip a switch and I have faith that that is going to work. And it's going to come on. It's going to do what it was intended to do. Every once in a while, we'll trip a breaker and you have to go out and flip the box. And then you can go to the light switch and flip it on. But I never question when I come into my dark house that when I hit the switch that it's not going to produce light. Well, we need to have that same confidence when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And if we're abiding and we're connected and plugged into the power stores, we can we can guarantee in our life that when we have something that happens because we're abiding with Him, that the Holy Spirit is going to help us overcome those obstacles. From the day of Pentecost and until the Lord's return, the church's commission is to receive power from on high, do business until Jesus comes, go into the world, and experience the Lord's working with them and, confer uh, and confirming the word through the accompanying signs of the Holy Spirit. Now, we value this as a church. We want to see the demonstrations of God. We want to hear the prophetic word of the Lord. And I love that our church isn't just informational teaching, that there's application and there's revelation, that God is speaking to us right now in this moment to realign our hearts and our values to our real life family so that we can move forward and we can accomplish what God has called and purposed us to. This full mandate is only possible by being baptized in the Holy Spirit, by continually being filled and afresh with His love and power, and abiding daily in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fullness is available to every believer, but at Real Life Church, we value it. We want every child every adult, everyone in between child and adult to be filled and walking in the spirit fullness as the Lord moves and transforms our life. See, abiding in the fullness of the Holy Spirit is not just an exper experiential phenomenon. It is a discipline we decide we want to have true at real life. If our real life family is going to live out a spirit-formed life, there has to be a commitment to hear God's voice and an abiding fullness of the Spirit. And there has to be the yieldedness to being Spirit-led. You see, the Holy Spirit won't lead us where we won't go. He won't touch things in our life that we won't allow Him to. He's a gentleman. A scripture that... Um, that I've read many times and it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would let me in, I would come and abide with them. I would dwell with them. I would come in. I, I think about that scripture often and I'm always trying to listen for the knock of the Holy Spirit. The knock of the Holy Spirit. When He is knocking on the door. How many have had it happen in our life? Someone's come to our door and we were busy doing something and they were knocking on the door and they kept knocking and knocking and finally we heard it and they had been down there for several minutes trying to get our attention. 
Well, that's a great picture of what can happen in our life. When we are not in tune to hearing his voice, we won't hear the knock of his spirit because there's always going to be a lot of noise around us. And at real life, we want to be able to hear the voice of God and be able to open the door so He can come in and help us deal with the complexities that can sometimes be the issues that arise in our heart and our life. So being led by the Spirit is, is only possible as we hear God's voice, as we're living to abide and uh, be full of His Spirit. Moses said these words in Exodus 33, chapter 15. They've just had this encounter with God, and, um, and they are, the God is saying, Hey, I, I'm sending you to a new land, and he's, uh, I'm going to send you to this land. You're moving out. And, and Moses says these words, and he says, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. In other words, we're not moving outside of where. Your presence is leading us. Let me rephrase it for this is real life. God, we are not moving where your spirit isn't leading. Let me say that again. We're not moving where your spirit isn't leading. We are not going to be activated by our emotions or impulsivity or even our own agendas or desires. We are going to be a spirit-led church. And that is a distinction of real life church. It's a distinction that we have that we value the Holy Spirit and His presence amongst us, realizing that He changes destinies, that we are willing to yield our agenda, to make room for Him, to make room for Him in every aspect, make room for Him in, in our business, make room for Him in our worship, make room for Him in our teaching, make room for Him that He can speak because we believe that the Holy Spirit has the most important voice in the room and that as we abide in Him, we're going to be led by Him. But it requires us to yield so why is it such a value to be led by the Spirit at Real Life Church? Well, let me tell you this. Let me just give you some examples. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Jesus himself was led by the Spirit. Jesus was, before he went to the wilderness, he was baptized by John. And it says that the Spirit led him into the wilderness where he was temp tempted by the adversary. He went into a fasting time, a preparation time, where he was tempted by the enemy. Now, that doesn't feel like something that God would do, but he was led by the Spirit. And Jesus probably didn't want to go out into the hot, dusty desert. That wouldn't have been where he went. Why can't I just stay right here at the Jordan River where it's nice and cool? I mean, that would be my choice. Put a little beach a towel down and you know get a suntan and enjoy the water but he was led into the wilderness because God wanted to do something deeper in his life when we're yielding to the leading of the Holy Spirit sometimes there's going to be places he leads us we're not going to want to go we're not going to understand until later on but it says that Jesus was not only led into the wilderness but he came out of the wilderness in the power of of the Spirit, that after he went through the testing and the trial and passed, he came out in the power of the Spirit. So the Spirit knows what he's doing. You see, we need the guidance, insight, and truth in every area of our life. We need the Holy Spirit's guidance, insight, and truth in area of every area of our life. Jesus is telling the disciples, hey, I'm going to leave and I'm going to send another and he says, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said. So what is he going to do? He's going to teach us and remind us of the truth. That's how he leads us. He reminds us that we are real life church. He reminded me not to veer from my purpose. He reminds us of who we are so that we can gravitate and align our, our, our values so that we can go into our destiny. That is the value 
of real life church. Galatians 5, a familiar passage. He's talking to the church of Galatia and he tells them, he says in verse 18, uh, 16, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually read it, but it says this, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So as I'm listening and I am be, and and I'm abiding in the Holy Spirit and I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, what's going to happen? I'm not going to have the tendency to allow my flesh to grow to be the loudest voice, the loudest uh, member of my body, but I'm going to be able to overcome the appetite of even this fleshly nature the desires that it craves for. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not, uh, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So he says, listen, when you are led by the Holy Spirit, when you are abiding by the Holy Spirit, when you're listening to the Word, in the Word, when you're allowing the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit and you are being a Spirit-formed person, what's going to happen in our life is we're going to look more like Jesus. Where Our testimony is going to be not only in Word, but in deed. That the world is going to see not only not only caring people, but the power that will draw people to Him. I believe desperately for Real Life Church that He wants us to be Spirit formed. People of the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, and living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and we will see God move from neighborhoods to nations. We'll see God build His kingdom all around us. We'll discover and step into the favor of God and His purpose for us. I want that for you. I want that for my family. I've seen it happen as we have walked this journey. No, it hasn't been easy. And just like Jesus, there's been those moments where it feels like we've been in the wilderness. But let me tell you, if we survive the wilderness and we and we allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in the wilderness, we're coming out with power. Somebody say power. We're coming out with the power of the Spirit, and we are going from one level to another level, because this is real life. And being at real life is about being a Spirit-formed, Spirit-led believer. I pray today that God will do that in your heart. Maybe you've misunderstood the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've been somewhere where it wasn't talked about a lot, and so you really don't know about the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to know this person that Jesus promised that would abide with us forever. This person that He will lead us into truth, that would convince uh, the world of what was sin and righteousness. He breaks through the gray area. This one that is a counselor and a comforter to us. This one that cares so deeply about you that when you don't know how to pray, He intercedes on your behalf. This intercession isn't one way like, God, please help them. He's asking God for the answers, though His will for your life, so He can release it to you. Come on, we need a friend like that. And the Holy Spirit is that partner in our life and I want you to abide with Him. I want you to be filled fresh and anew. And as we close, I just want to pray that over your life. I want to pray for a fresh and, and filling of the Holy Spirit. If you pray in your spiritual language, I want you to do that right And I want us to open right now our lives, our hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, would you fill real life with your Holy Spirit? Lord, would you let this be a place where your Holy Spirit is welcome? We make room for you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We love your words, your life, and what you speak to us. We ask that you would show us even deeper and greater things. That, that as we live out real life, that you would be a vital part 
of something that we value in every age and every stage. Lord, from the nursery, Lord, to the parking lot, to the sound room, to, to technicians, that these would be people of the Spirit, Spirit-formed, Spirit-led. They hear your voice. They're in tune, God, into what you're saying. And Lord, it's able to help others around them. And Lord, they become the testimony of Christ because they're abiding in you. Lord, we want to be a spirit-led church. We need your direction. God, as decisions are being made and we're looking for facilities and we're going through the process, Lord, we want to be led by what you want us to do, not what we think is right, not what we can do in our own power, but what is the will of the Father in heaven. And we know, Holy Spirit, that you're going to show us you're going to show families and marriages and kids and young adults, Lord, the direction and what you're unpacking in their life because that's the good Father who gave us the Holy Spirit. That's what He does. So today as we continue in This Is Real Life, as we continue to live out our life before others, God, we pray that our family would grow, that it would be healthy, God, and that your Spirit would be the center of it all. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you for being with me today. We can't wait to see you next week right here at Real Life Church. What an awesome word today. I really hope that that touched your heart and moved you. And I'm so thankful that you chose to join us today. Don't forget to connect through our social media and feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Real Life On Demand. We can't wait to see you next week.